Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a fabulous Monday. Sam Kimmy with the weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Gucci Globetrotter GG Beauty Case. Uh, all right, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's start your workouts, go to work, let's do your laundry, whatever it is that you do, come join me. We have some awesome topics to cover today, and I do have a feeling that this Minx Monday will be a lot shorter than most just because as you can tell I don't I don't sound so great I also don't feel the best uh, so hopefully it's still um, you know hopefully it's still a good video so my apologies for sounding the way that I do all right so let's get started with the very first question shall we from Saki Saki hopefully I said that correctly recently I went to the coach outlet store and I was carrying my Louis Vuitton Alma BB and Rose Ballerine and when I went to the register to pay for my things, I pulled out my wallet, which was a matching Victorine wallet, also in Rose Ballerine. It, imme it immediately caught the sales associate's eye, and not only did she comment on it, she even pulled over another sales associate to come over and look at my items. Then another lady asked the question, how much was all of that? I literally just panicked because I didn't know what to say. I had gotten this bag secondhand, and I was telling her that I got it at a discount, uh, it was a second hand, blah, 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 almost as if I had to justify these items to her. Anyways, I had never experienced that sheer panic before, and I thought it was kind of weird that she was asking me how much I spent on my things, because I wasn't sure if she was trying to judge me for buying expensive things or whatnot. What do you think of this? What would you do if someone asked how much you've spent on your bag, small leather goods, etc.? This is an awesome, awesome question, and... Um, you know what, I think, I totally think that it's weird. Um, I think it would make for a really awkward, you know, a really awkward moment. So I completely understand where you're coming from, you know, and first and foremost, I don't think you should ever have to justify your items to anybody, especially a stranger, you know, and, um, you know, whether she was trying to, to judge you or whether she genuinely wanted to know the, how much the item was. Um, I just, I totally think it's weird. So call me what you will, but, um, I would never do that. It's kind of like one of those things that I feel like you never, you should never talk about uh, money, politics, and religion out in public, you know? Um, and I think it's different, like, if you guys or if someone on Instagram asks how much the handbag was or a small leather good because you're talking about those items. But when you're out and about and someone says, oh my God, how much was that? It totally makes it feel awkward. Um, you know, so I have had this happen before and I didn't necessarily answer the person. I just kind of, uh, I just kind of laughed, not necessarily laughed, but I just kind of, um, avoided it altogether. Um, you can always say, oh, it was a gift and that way you don't have to explain yourself any further. But yeah, I think it's totally weird, right? Um, I don't know, maybe I'm looking at this differently, but I feel like, I would just kind of think I would maybe I would ask oh what kind of bag is that or what kind of small leather good is that and then if I was genuinely interested in it I would do my own research you know when I'm at home or I can ask her what kind of leather that was or whatever the case may be but to blatantly ask someone how much was that when you're a complete stranger and you're out and about I think um, I do think it's rude for someone to do that you know but again maybe I'm looking at this completely different maybe I'm crazy I don't know but I would love to hear your guys's thoughts on this do you feel the same way have you had this happen before what do you respond um, you know how do you respond to the situation I will never be rude to someone and say that's none of your business. Um, even though I do think it's, um, even though I do think it's rude, I will never be rude to them by answering them that way. But um, I know that that's a possibility for it to come out. I actually asked my hubby about this question, <laughs> and um, he said something that was not so nice, you know. <laughs> so he sees it like it's none of their business, you know. He's all, why don't you ask them how much was your haircut? You know, I'm like, okay. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. Like I said, I know some people might, but um, yeah, I totally think it's awkward. I totally think it's weird. I think that maybe just by saying, oh, what kind of bag, what kind of small leather good, what kind of leather is it? And then if I want to do further research on it, then I'll do it. But I would never ask someone, oh my God, how much was that? And make them feel totally, you know, totally awkward. I don't think she was trying to make you feel bad. I don't think she was trying to, um, you know, make you feel awkward. I think it was just like, oh my gosh, maybe it caught her off by surprise. That's what I would think, um, you know, but I know there is that case that people might be out there that would want to make you feel bad about, um, 
about luxury goods or anything like that. And to that I say, you shouldn't have to explain yourself to absolutely anybody. I don't care who they are. If you like it, if it makes you happy, then you rock it, you know what I'm saying? So fantastic question. Again, I would love to hear your thoughts and hopefully I was able to help. Next question from Ashley Strimebeck. Hopefully I said that correctly. Do you use an organizer in every bag? And if not, what criteria do you have for needing one or not needing one? Ever since I found Samorga, I am obsessed and I feel like every bag I buy, I need to go onto the site and get an organizer. Um, all right, so we have a little bit more eye candy. Here is the Samorga organizer that I normally end up using for, um, for my Neverfulls and I absolutely love them. I was never really an organizer type of person. I appreciated them, but um, they have since, uh, I have since changed my opinion. And uh, Samorga has been so gracious within the last year and a half. They've given me 20% off um, discount code for their organizers, which I always leave on the description box below, but I really like their quality and I really like that they have so many different designs to choose from, especially if you have a lot of different, uh, if you have a lot of variety in your handbag collection. So. I think that they are amazing. I haven't tried any other organizers out there just because I am so happy with, um, you know, with their quality and their designs, as I mentioned. Um, now, do I end up using an organizer in every bag or what's my criteria? I actually don't. Um, and I have organizers for two of my Neverfulls, um, all my, both of my Deauvilles from Chanel. I also have an organizer for my Speedy 25 from Louis Vuitton. And I also have one for the Speedy 30, the Classic and the Bandolier, uh, the Bandolier 25 and the 30 Classic. And um, I use the 30, the, I use the organizer in the 30 sometimes, not too, too often. Um, when I first got the organizer for the 25, I used it for about, a, I think about a month. And um, I don't like using it inside of that bag. And the reason why I don't use it inside of the 25 is because the opening is already pretty restricting. And if I go to put the organizer in there, I feel that it makes it a little bit harder to take my items out. I also don't, um, I'm not too fond of the lining or the top of the organizer, how it ends up hitting the lining of the handbag. And I feel that over time that it might end up leaving, not necessarily an indentation, but it might end up leaving um, like a mark on there. Uh, but I did a first impression and I did a review on this Morgan organizers last year and if you guys are curious, I will make sure I put it on the description box below. But um, on my Neverfulls, I use it 50% uh, of the time, actually like 75% of the time. And in my Deauvilles, I use it 100% of the time. And I noticed that I prefer to use uh, organizers inside of totes just because I feel that it's such an open space um, and it does make it a lot easier to see all of my items at a glance, not necessarily having them gravitate towards the middle of the bag. But the funniest thing is that I actually prefer to use organizers not necessarily for the organization. I prefer to use them for the structure. And the reason why I kind of, um, I use it 75% of the time in my Neverfulls is because with the Neverfull, the canvas itself, I feel that um, the bag kind of keeps its shape. And with the Deauvilles, it turns into a beautiful mess every single time. You know, so if I don't have an organizer in the bag and I was to put all of my items inside, it would just kind of flop over. So that's what I've noticed. I tend to use them mostly for structure, not necessarily for, or for organization. But I do appreciate that because it does make it a whole lot easier, as I said before, to find your items, um, to see them at a glance and not necessarily have to go digging so much. And with this organizer, it actually comes with, uh, I have another one that comes with uh, the middle slots. I take those out just because I like to have everything kind of right there. So not necessarily in pockets. It's kind of weird, right? Um, but I don't know if you guys are the same way, but that's kind of my thing. I want something to help it keep its structure to help me find my items a little bit faster. Uh, but it's not necessarily the main reason why I use an organizer, um, you know, to keep my items organized. So fantastic question and hopefully I was able to help. Next question from Miko Girlie 99. Have you ever been thinking about a certain bag for a long time? When you finally pull the trigger, another amazing bag comes out that you love too. If so, which style was that and did you end up purchasing both? Um, all right, so I actually had this happen uh, very, very recently and um, as much as I liked both of them, um, unfortunately I didn't have the economic possibility to buy both of them, so of course I only walked away with one. Um, but before I tell you guys which bags those were, um, the first one, I was like dead set on it. I had been doing a ton of research on it. I've talked about it a million times here on Minx Monday. 
I even did a handbag of the week video. I'm sure you guys are probably sick and tired of me talking about it. And I was like, okay, that's it. That's the one, you know, I'm done. It's in my mind. I was like, okay, this is my next bag. And then another beauty came along and I didn't even, I, I didn't necessarily hesitate, um, but I was like, okay, this is it, this is it. And even though I was doing all the research in the world for the other bag, when this one came along, I was like, done deal. And I am talking about the Lady Dior and uh, the Chanel Pink Mini. Um, so like I said, I was already you know, gung-ho, I was already set on the Lady Dior. I was gonna get it in this beautiful, beautiful color. It was also a pink and um, it was in my basket. And once I got the phone call about this one, I was like, I have to go check it out. Um, and I told you guys on the unboxing video that I was 90% sure that I was gonna keep this bag and I'm so happy that I did, but it's just crazy how I was so set and I had done so much, so much research on a certain type of bag that I kind of threw that out the window when I saw this one, you know, and I kind of chalk it up to the heart wants what the heart wants. And even though I really liked that pink one, it made me wonder, okay, am I getting it just because of the variety or am I getting it because I genuinely want this bag because I genuinely like it. And um, that's kind of where the whole, you know, when I've talked about it before, when you get a bag and if you second guess yourself and if it ends up, if you buy it, if it ends up sitting, you know, on your floor in the shopping bag for a week, week and a half, sometimes I feel like that's your gut instinct telling you maybe this isn't the bag for you. I still absolutely love the Lady Dior and um, maybe I'll rethink um, the color that I was going to go for. But um, I just, I feel that until I'm 100 percent you know, I'm gonna go for it, then that's when I'm gonna go for it. And this one, I just fell madly in love with the color. I love the size. Um, even though, like I said last week, it's not necessarily the most versatile handbag, I am just crazy about it. You know, it's that, it's that Barbie pink that I've been looking for for such a long time. So I'm really happy that I went for it, but um, like I said, I still love the Lady Dior and hopefully it makes it to my collection sometime. Um, but um, maybe I have to go back to the drawing board and reconsider some of the details or some of the things that I was uh, so set on, you know, some of the details that I was so set on that bag that maybe that's why I didn't necessarily end up uh, pulling the trigger. But uh, it would have been great, like I said, to add both, but I just didn't have the possibility to, I didn't have the funds to be able to to buy both. It was either one or the other, and um, that one just caught my eye a little bit more. So fantastic question. I would love to hear if you guys have had the same thing happen. Uh, did you end up buying both? Did you only go for one or the other? I would love to know what you guys think on this topic. So fantastic question, and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Benita Brewington. I'm laughing, Minnie. Why do you say the ending so fast? And this time, it seemed that you were going to bust out in laughter. You're so funny. Do you time yourself to see how fast you can say it? If so, what's your going time? <laughs> no, um, this is in reference to just my sign off. Um, I don't know what my deal is, to be completely honest with you. I have no idea. I try my hardest to say it slower so I can enunciate all the words and it doesn't sound like just, blah, 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 you know, and I, I don't know what happens when it comes to that point. It just starts coming out. <laughs> Trust me, I know that it's super annoying. I've had a lot of people tell me you talk way too fast. Can you talk slower? Um, and I don't even know where it came from either because I didn't always do it. So I don't, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. I wish I could answer it better, but um, <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea where it came from, but I will try my hardest to just not say it so fast between that and the beginning. Um, and the reason why I started to laugh last week is because of the same thing. I really, I was like, okay, I'm gonna say it slow, I'm gonna say it slow. And then when the time came, it just all came out in like a second. It all came out in like a second. And it's getting to the point where I'm getting it so mixed up that I don't even know what the heck I'm saying anymore, you know? So <laughs> I don't know, but um, I will try my hardest to, um, to say it a little bit slower and uh, maybe not laugh so much because I know, you know, like I said before, I know that it's annoying. So hopefully that was able to answer your question. Next question from Jesse W. What do you think of the new Cartier handbags? Um, all right, so before I get any further, let me insert some pictures of the newest handbags from Cartier right now.
I think that they are absolutely beautiful. Some of them come in the signature red with the gold detail. I feel that they're very simple and they're also very functional. Um, and I think that they have great price points um, on top of that. Now, um, I think that they're great, but I've always wondered why Cartier handbags and small leather goods aren't more popular. Because I would assume that um, the attention to detail and the craftsmanship that they put into their timepieces and into their jewelry would be translated into their handbags and to their small leather goods. But when you see them on the pre-loved market, they are considerably less than what you would pay retail for them. Anywhere from 75 to 80, uh, an 80% 80 difference from retail to, to pre-loved. So I'm curious why they're not more popular. I think that these are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the first one is the one that just kind of drew me in. I saw it on Instagram and I just thought it was, I thought it was gorgeous, you know? But um, I would love to know if any of you guys have any Cartier handbags or small leather goods, um, how do they wear? Is there something that maybe you don't, um, is there a detail or is there something about it that you wouldn't recommend? Is there something that you would change? Whatever the case may be, I would love to hear you guys' thoughts on this, um, you know, on these handbags or these small other goods. But like I said before, I like the fact that they're very simple. It doesn't have this crazy, de uh, like this crazy logo that's kind of like in your face. The simplicity speaks volumes. And um, I mean, come on, that red with that gold detail, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> it is stunning. It is absolutely stunning. I really want to go into a Cartier boutique so I can uh, take a look at their items. I know that um, the Cartier boutique, when we were in Hawaii, uh, they had one and they had a whole setup. You know, they have so many beautiful, beautiful pieces. But like I said, I'm always wondering why it is that they don't necessarily end up holding their resale value the best because even the craftsmanship, some of these bags that I've seen on the pre-love market are you know, are like 20 years old and they look absolutely amazing. So that does, um, that does make me wonder. But uh, regardless, if you guys have any of them, let us know in the comment section down below. But fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. And the last question from Kimberly K. What is considered vintage? How old does a bag have to be to be vintage? 15 years old, 20, 30. I hear vintage often, and I was wondering if there's a time frame. Um, this is an awesome, awesome question because I feel like there's so many different opinions out there when it comes to vintage, so it's hard to really get a concrete type of answer. Um, but um, I've heard the same thing, you know, that uh, 10, 15, 20, 25, all of those are considered vintage. According to Harper's Bazaar, anything 20 years or older, once upon a time, that was the rule of thumb, that uh, 20 years or older, that's considered vintage. Nowadays, they're saying that a bag that is 10 years old is considered vintage. Personally, I like to, um, I, uh, the way that I interpret it is kind of a bag that's between 20 to 25 is what I consider vintage. Like I said before, I know there's a lot of different opinions out there um, when it comes to antique versus vintage. Antique, it has to be at least 100 years old for it to be considered an antique. And, um, you know, that is also open up to interpretation. So I don't think that there's really um, necessarily a rule out there. Like I said before, back in the day, Harper's Bazaar said that the rule of thumb was uh, 20 years or older. And I like to assume that that, um, that would be the case also. So maybe someone thinks that 10 or 15 is vintage, but uh, I definitely say that between 20 to 25 is what I would consider vintage uh, when it comes to handbags or jewelry or anything, um, you know, for that matter. So I would love to know your guys' opinion on this. What do you think is considered vintage? Do you feel the same way? Do you feel that it should be 20 plus years? Um, are you on board with it being 10 plus years? Whatever the case may be, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this question. So fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to answer it. Um, all right, you guys. So that does it for Minx Monday Q&A. Again, my apologies for the way that I sound and um, if I, ha if I had a hard time talking, um, <laughs> I sound so weird. My ears literally need to pop. So I'm sure it's going to be really fun, really fun editing this video, and I might sound a lot more hoarse than um, than what I think I sound like. Uh, but for this week's lineup, um, I'm going to try my hardest to do a first impression um, or some type of video on the Gucci Globetrotter. I've been getting a lot of questions on Instagram. I think it is an awesome, awesome bag, and um, I'm really excited that I get a chance to try it out. So I'm going to try my hardest to have a video on that later on this week. Um, I was thinking about doing a, um, a get ready with me because it's been such a long time. I thought about maybe doing it on Saturday, but I know it's getting closer and closer to the holidays and people are doing last minute shopping. So I didn't know if, um, 
If you guys still want me to do it, if you did, let me know your questions, um, you know, on the comment section down below. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two to three times a week. It doesn't sound right, right? When I don't, when I don't say it fast, it doesn't sound like, <laughs> like my type of video. I don't know. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that as well. But again, thank you so much for watching. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not, the choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.